their hearts, change their minds tonight, Lord God. And Father, we come in agreement and we pray for the church in Riverside, Lord God, that Father, you would touch their hearts. We thank you, Lord God, that all the children are running through that park now, Father, because of your faithfulness. And we know that you will do the same thing here, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless our people, Lord God, and speak through our pastor, Lord God. Give them words straight from the throne room, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We ask that the Holy Spirit would move and that you would have your way here in this service, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We yes, praise God. you, Lord God. And we give you all honor, praise, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, everybody. Good, good, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening. I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and look at your neighbor square in the eye like you're going to sock him real good and just say, man, I love you, neighbor. I love you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now look at the neighbor on the other side. Do the same thing. Look at him square in the eye and say, I just love you, neighbor. I love you, neighbor. Amen. If you got a Bible tonight, we're in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Hallelujah. If you got a Bible, we're in Luke chapter 5. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. Someone will bring you one if we got some extras. Amen. And tonight I want to talk to you about doing the Word of God. How many of you know that the Bible says if you're not a doer of the Word, if you're a amen. hearer only, amen, that you deceive yourself? Come on, somebody. But the faith that we have is an active kind of faith. Amen. <laughs> How many of you know that the Bible says faith without works is dead? Faith without works, that means if you know something, but you don't do something with what you know, come on, that faith don't mean nothing. Amen. Tonight we're in Luke chapter 5, and I want to talk to you about uh, about faith in action. Hallelujah. Faith in action. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is going to be a good message tonight. Amen. Faith in action. Now, I want to share a story before we get into this. Listen. There's a lot of guys here. How many of you guys are fishermen? You guys like to fish? Yeah? You guys are fishermen. Okay. Let me share a story with you because it pertains to our story tonight. Uh, in, down in Southern California, we can go down to Huntington Beach Pier, Newport Pier, Balboa Pier. We can go fish off the pier. But a friend of mine tells me one day, he says, Pastor, he says, I really want to take you out. He says, I'm a really good fisherman. I said, oh, yeah? I didn't believe him. He says, he says, I'm a really good fisherman and I want to take you out. Why don't we go out and take a, a half day to go deep sea fishing? And he says, I'll pay and, and we just got to go and fish. And I said, okay, let's go. So we get on a, uh, they get on a boat, right, to do a half day out in the middle of the ocean, deep sea fishing. And the boat is loaded with people going fishing that day. Loaded, right? There's, there's, it, there's no room to sit down. It's standing room only. Everyone's standing on the edge of the boat because everyone's trying to get a place to cast in their line. So on this boat, every deep sea, deep sea fishing boat has what they call deck hands. Does everybody know what a deck hand is? Okay, the deck hands, these are the guys who are the expert fishermen. They're the expert deck hands. These guys know exactly what to do, how to do it, what, to, what time to get it done. So every time the men would cast their lines in to the water, all the lines would get tangled up. And every time I'd cast my line in, somebody would cross over my line and two or three lines would get tangled up. So we would spend 15 minutes trying to get untangled, not realizing that we had fish on the line. We're trying to get untangled and there's fish on the line. But once the deckhand came and he saw that you were tangled up, he knew exactly what to do to get it all undone. Now my friend, uh, who says, Pastor, I'm a really good fisherman, when we pulled back into the, uh, into the dock at, uh, at about two o'clock in the afternoon, he hadn't caught not one fish. <laughs> he hadn't caught not one fish. I'm not a fisherman at all. I'm, a, I'm just a pastor. I'm just a, a lowly Baptist preacher. Come on, somebody. Uh, but, I, but I caught 10 fish that day. Amen. <laughs> I caught 10 fish and there was some, uh, you know, every fish story says, and they were this big, you know what I mean? But I caught 10 fish and he didn't catch any. Then he proceeded to tell me on the drive all the way home why he didn't catch any fish that day. Come on, somebody say amen to this. Amen. Now watch this, watch this. Why is it that men, especially men, I don't know women are, women are like this, but men always think that they know all there is to do. Men always think that we know how to do everything. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Amen. Right? Men are, we're the experts at fixing a car. 
How, how many of you guys know, remember when your best friend would be working on his car, there'd be three or four of you standing there watching him, <laughs> saying, oh, that's not it. You got to do this first. Oh, no, no, that's not it. We all know how to do stuff, right? But we don't actually put our hands to the plow to get it done. Man, we, we just act like we know everything. Come on, somebody. We act like, uh, how many of you remember when you were on, out here on the streets, man? You act like you know everything out here on the streets. Come on, somebody. Amen. But let me just tell you, we don't always know everything. And just like I said, faith is uh, when you put faith, uh, action to your faith. Amen. That means that you trust God to do the things you don't know how to do. As men, we do what we can do. As men, we do what we can do. But then we got to trust God to do what we cannot do. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. This is powerful. Because as we get into this story tonight, I want to share this with you. This is so beautiful. Jesus is preaching at the Sea of Galilee. And as he's talking to a huge crowd, the huge crowd is surrounding him. And they're literally pushing him because they're pressing in against him. And he started, his, his heels are starting to get in the water. And as he's sharing the word of God with the group of people just like this, but there's a huge crowd, right? They're pressing in on him, pressing in on him. So what does he do? He looks over to the side and he sees a couple of boats there. And as he sees the boats, he says, I know what I'll do. Let me go jump into one of those boats. And when he jumps in, a guy named Simon Peter jumps in with him and says, hey, what are you doing in my boat, bro? And he says, he says, hold on. He says, listen, I noticed that you were over there cleaning your nets, which means that you guys worked all night, but you didn't catch anything. You expert fishermen, come on, here we go. You expert fishermen from the Sea of Galilee fished all night. And if you're over there not counting fish and not sorting fish, but you're over there cleaning your nets, that means you probably didn't catch very much fish. <laughs> Just like my friend who was the expert fisherman and didn't catch any fish that day, right? So he says, yeah, well, we worked hard all night. We didn't catch anything. He goes, Jesus says this. He says, okay, I want you, I got a big crowd here. So back up a little off the shore so I can talk to the crowd. Now, isn't this beautiful because we see Jesus ministering to the people just like this ministering to a crowd who just wants to who's hungry for the word of god not only are they hungry for the loaves and fishes come on somebody but they're hungry to hear the word of god yeah the food satisfies the body but the word of god satisfies the soul let the church say amen, amen. so as he's there he's preaching the word he's sitting in the boat simon peter is sitting down right next to him hearing the word of god being preached Hearing the word of God being preached. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as Jesus is speaking the word, faith in Simon is starting to rise up. Now this is beautiful because watch what we see here. Jesus is not just sharing the word of God. What is he doing from the boat? He's fishing for men. In fact, this is what he told Peter, his brother Andrew. He told James and John, he says, follow me and I will make you <laughs> Fishers of men. Come on, somebody. Every pulpit is a boat to fish from. Come on, somebody. Every every pastor who's up there speaking the word of God is fishing for the souls of men. Hallelujah. Donna, I'm fishing for you. Keith, I'm fishing for you. Kenneth, I'm fishing for you. Come on, Pedro, I'm fishing for you. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus does. Watch, this is so powerful. Because even though faith is being sparked in Peter, Peter's a businessman. And his business is fishing. He's in the fishing business and he's got partners. And guess what happens in business? If you don't have no product to sell, you have no business. Church is the people business. Listen to this. Church is the people business. If you ain't got no people, you ain't got no business. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. So watch what's happening here. Watch what's happening here. This is beautiful. Jesus is sharing the word of God and he's just off the shore sitting in the front of the boat, talking to the people, just like this. Faith is being sparked in the people. The people are believing in the Lord Jesus. The people are catching the, uh, uh, the scent of the pastor. Amen. They're catching faith. Hallelujah. And this is so beautiful because watch what Jesus is doing. He is literally fishing for men. Peter is sitting right next to him watching this. Now remember, Peter had been approached by Jesus before and they met each other before and Jesus kept telling him why don't you come and follow me man 
Why don't you come and follow me? I want to be a blessing to you. I want to bless you real good. I want to show you what it is to, to love people and, and not worship things. Amen. I, I want to show you what it is to have faith in God. I want to show you what it is to rise up above your circumstances. I want to show you what it is, how good God is, that God is a delivering God, that God is a merciful God, that God is a powerful God, that God is a delivering God. Hallelujah. And I want you to see firsthand how good God is. Hallelujah. Oh, watch this. This is so powerful. Because look how good Jesus is. He says when he's done preaching, he says to Peter, okay, Peter, you fished with me for people. Now I'm going to go fish with you for fish. Peter says, what? He says, wait a minute, pastor. Wait a minute. I don't know about this. We worked hard all night looking for those dumb fish. We went to the one side of the lake. We didn't find no fish. Come on. We went to the other side of the lake. We didn't find no fish. We went to the other, the east side of the gate. We didn't find no fish. We went to the west side of the lake. We didn't find no fish. Master, I'm the professional fisherman. You're the preacher man. Don't tell me how to do my job. Woo, Jesus. Watch this. This is powerful. This is amazing because watch this. Jesus says, look, I know you're the fisherman. But I'm not here and I'm not worried about your fish. I'm here to show you that you can be a fisher of men. And if you'll listen to my voice and do what I ask, you'll receive the blessing that comes from obedience. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, when you listen to the word of God, you will get the benefit of the word of God. Oh, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own stinking thinking. In all your ways, put God first, and he will direct your steps. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it out loud. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You got to trust God. Now look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor. neighbor. Hey, neighbor. neighbor. You got to trust God. Ooh, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. It's the blessing that comes from obedience. Yeah. I want to say this to you, uh, Margaret and Keith and, and Pedro and Lolly. Come on, somebody. I want to say this to you, that when you put your trust in God, yeah. And if you'll just do what God says to do, you can have what God says you can have. Let the church say amen to that. That's powerful. Hallelujah. That's good preaching. All right, let's read it together. Mark, uh, Luke chapter 5, let me read it to you. It goes like this. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, God. Amen. Lord, be with us, Lord, in the word tonight, Father God. I I already see, Lord God, you're working on the people. I already see faces changing. I see eyes welling up, Lord God. I, I see you working, Lord God. And Lord, we ask tonight, Lord God, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. That the word we hear tonight, Lord God, would be so impactful in our lives. That we would know how to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. To lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways to put God first. And then he will direct our paths. Lord, show us what that means tonight, Lord God. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you. Bless the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, everybody says. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what he says. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, with the people who were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And as the people were listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge there were two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Remember we said washing your nets means that they were already done. They were trying to clean up their nets and go home. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter. And he asked him to put a little out from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. Let the church say amen. amen. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, he said this. He says, I want you, Simon, to put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered Jesus and he said, Master, Oh, master, 
Oh, pastor and oh, master. Look what he says. Oh, master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Let the church say amen. amen. Now, I like this because Peter was just like me and he was just like you. How many of you like a good argument every once in a while, a good little confrontation? Come on, Miss Margaret. Amen. 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 Why is it that we call Jesus our Lord and our Savior, but sometimes all we do is argue with Jesus? Peter is arguing with Jesus right here. He says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, Pastor. You're the preacher man. I'm the fisherman. Why don't you let me take care of my business and you take care of your business? Come on, somebody. Say amen, amen. to that. Amen. Right now in 2021, people are so offended by, by anything anyone says or how you look or if you're wearing a mask or you're not wearing a mask or how you voted. Amen. People are so offended so easily. But just think about Jesus for a minute. Just listen to this. Jesus is the Son of God. He is all God and all man, 100% God, 100% man, all wrapped up in the flesh. But listen to what Jesus thinks sometimes when we argue with Jesus. He says, you call me the way, but you don't follow me. Ooh, help us, Pastor. Come on. He says, you call me the light, but you don't see me. Ooh. He says, you call me teacher, but you don't listen to me. He says, you call me Lord, but you don't serve me. Help us, help us. He says, you call me the truth, but you don't believe me. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, Amen. Ah. Come on, Ouch, help Jesus. Us. And doesn't it make you wonder sometimes when you argue with God, like, why am I arguing with God? He knows me better than anybody. Yeah. And the Lord knew Peter better than anybody. Watch this. This is powerful because he knew he was intimately acquainted with our going down and our rising up. Amen. The Bible says he knows every hair on your head. He knows your ways better than you know your ways. He knows all things about you. So he's telling Peter, listen, I know you worked hard all night. I know you did everything that you know how to do. Come on, somebody. I know you went through the motions. I know you did everything that you thought was right, but I'm telling you, what I'm telling you has nothing to do with what you think is right. What I'm telling you is right. Let's go. Yes, yes. Oh, watch Hallelujah. this. Watch this. Watch the statement of faith from Peter. Watch. Peter says this. He says, Simon answered. He says, Master, we worked hard all night and we didn't catch anything. In other words, we're the professional fishermen. We did what we knew how to do and nothing happened. But because... You say so, I will go out and let down the nets. Oh my goodness, watch this. Look at, say this out loud. Just do, say it out loud. Just do what Jesus said. Let me just tell you, when you just do what Jesus said, your life will be different. Come on, somebody. Your life will change. Amen. Hallelujah. You will you will you will reap the benefit of the obedience of being obedient to God's word. Let the church say amen to that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch what he says. He says, Master, we worked hard all night. We went through the motions. We did everything what we knew how to do. Nevertheless, because you said let's go, I'm gonna go. Say it out loud. Just do. Just do. What Jesus said. What Jesus oh, watch said. this. Watch what happens here. Simon answered and he said, Master, we worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they went out and they had done, uh, dropped the nets, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so full, the boats began to sink. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. All you got to do is obey the Lord. And the Lord could give you your own net breaking. Come on, boat sinking miracle. Let the church say amen. You see, God is in the net breaking business. Come on. God is in the boat sinking business. God is in the miracle business. God is in the turn it around business. God is in the obey his word business. Come on, somebody. And when you just do what God said to do, you can have what the Lord said you can have. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say this. Listen to me. The Lord doesn't do something for nothing. 
Oh, come on, somebody, listen to this. Listen to this. The Lord never does something for nothing. The Lord always does something for something. Woo, listen to me carefully, church. This is powerful. The Lord doesn't do nothing, something for nothing. But what the Lord does, he always does something for something. He's showing Peter his miracle working power. Peter did everything that he knew that he thought was right. He went to the place that he thought was right. He got in the boat that he thought was right. He let down his nets when he thought it was right. He went fishing on the day that he thought it was right. He did all the things that he knew how to do. But when his self-effort resulted in zero, ah, come on somebody. This is what the Lord says, listen. You can, you can do all things that you think are right. And sometimes you get a goose egg, a zero. But how many of you know when you do things God's way, you get the benefit that comes with the blessing. Let the church say amen. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. But you only get the blessing when you do the obedience of God. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Say it out loud. I want to do what God says to do so I can have the blessing God said I could have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you'll just change your outlook, you can change your outcome. You see, because the God of the process is the God of the outcome. Let the church say amen. You see, the process that you go through to learn how to obey God is temporary. But the outcome that you get is eternal. Let the church say amen. That's powerful. So watch what happens here. Watch what happens. When Simon Peter, when, when they signal their friends to come and help them because their boat was sinking... They filled up both boats so that both of them began to sink. When Simon Peter saw the miracle that Jesus did, he said, he fell at Jesus' knees, at Jesus' feet. And he said, Lord, he says, I don't deserve this, Lord. I don't deserve for you a blessing like this. Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worthy, Lord God, to get this blessing from you. Watch this. He says, go away from me, Lord, because I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, Jesus, uh, Simon's partners. Jesus looks at him and he says, look, I know you're a sinful man. I know you fall short. I know you're not perfect. But I love you anyway. That's right. That's right. I love you so much that I still want to bless you. And it's not about what you do that brings the blessing. It's about who you know who gives the blessing. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Watch this. This is powerful. I had a friend tell me, he says, Pastor, he says, I'm not as good as I could be. And I said, okay. And he says, Pastor, I got to confess something. And I said, yes. He says, I'm not even as good as I should be. And I said, all right. <laughs> I was waiting for the punchline. And he goes, but I'll tell you what, Pastor. I'm better than I used to be. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. This is the process. Listen, this is the process that Jesus wants from us. God has done miracles in our life. He's turned them some things around for us he's turned some situations around and then he says look i just want to bless you and i want to love you i want to show you my goodness how many of you know we serve a good god a god who is gracious a god who is merciful a god who loves you a loving god a powerful god a merciful god amen a god of peace and a god of goodness now watch this Jesus wants us to trust him and become fishers of men ourselves. He told Peter in that last verse, he says, don't worry. I know you're not perfect. I know you've done some things. I know you made some mistakes. I know things aren't, not everything's right in your life. But I'm going to love you. I'm going to feel you. And you're going to be a fisher of men. I have a question to ask you tonight. I have a question, church, to ask you. 
because here I am fishing for you. I'm using the bait of the Holy Ghost to catch you. Yeah, hallelujah. But I'm not the only one fishing for you tonight. There's another fisherman in the water and he's trying to get his line tangled up with my line. And he's fishing for you tonight too. And his bait is drugs. His bait is alcohol. His bait is pornography. His bait is uh, 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 living with your boyfriend, living with your girlfriend. His bait is all those things Damn. that you feel like you like. His name is the devil. And he knows you just like God knows you. He knows you as well as you do. Come on, somebody. Amen. And he knows just the right bait to use on you. So I have one question tonight, and I'll close with this. Whose hook are you on? The Lord's. Whose hook are you on tonight? Listen. God Almighty. This is a question that causes you to search your heart. This is a question that causes you to search your, your, your spirit and say, okay, I know about God, but do I know God? Am I on God's hook? Come on, somebody. But I know what I like, and I know who likes to give it to me. Am I on that hook instead? Come on, somebody. Listen to this carefully. This is important. So you got to understand, listen, the Holy Ghost loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit wants peace for you. The Holy Spirit wants goodness for you. The Holy Spirit wants to deliver you. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit wants to bring good change into your life. He wants to bring the blessing that comes from obedience. Let the church say amen. amen. But there's an enemy and he's fishing for you and he's trying to destroy you. So you got to ask yourself tonight, whose hook am I on, Lolly? Whose hook am I on, Michelle? Whose hook am I on, Kenneth? Amen? Amen. And if you're on the listen, if you're on the wrong hook, tonight's your chance to get on the right hook. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Everybody stand up right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand up. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord.